Here we've got the Pro 800 from Behringer, and as you probably already know, it's based on the sequential circuits Profit 600 from back in 1982. Now, the Profit 600 was essentially a budget version of the Profit 5. It's got the sequential style oscillators, the single 24 dB low pass resonant filter. It's got a separate filter and amp envelope, a single LFO, and it's even got the Profit 5 and the Pro 1's Holymod section. And I've got an in-depth comparison of the Profit 5 versus the Profit 6 on the channel, so I'll leave a link of that in the description if that's of interest to you. And as the original was less than half the price of the Profit 5, and even had the extra oscillator at 6, not 5, you'd think it would have been a massive success. But it had a major flaw, and that was this chip. It just wasn't capable at the time of all the processor needed to control the synth. In particular, the envelopes were really sloppy, and control of the pots often felt really laggy. It just overall, it wasn't a great experience. Then years later, Gleagly introduced the upgrade, which replaced the original chip and added a load of extra functionality. Although it wasn't perfect, it became much more of a cut price Profit 5, and that's what we've got here. Essentially, we've got the same panel as on the original 600, with a couple of minor tweaks, and all the additional stuff is hidden under the hood and accessed via this membrane keypad. And I bought this one from Tom and it was just £339, which when you think about the price of a new Profit 5 or a used Profit 5 is quite remarkable. And following my comparison of this with my vintage Profit 600, Toman have offered to sponsor this video, which is very, very kind of them and hugely appreciated. And just to show I put my money where my mouth is, I've been a customer of Toman since I think it was about 2010, over a decade, I'm pretty sure. And I've bought a fair amount of synths that I've still got here from them. And that's not just because of the pricing, but also because of the customer service returns policy and all the other stuff that gives you faith in a reputable retailer. And I realize that sounds like sales patter, but it's just the honest truth. So uh, yeah, a real big thanks to Toman for sponsoring this. And please use the affiliate links in the description. It won't cost you any more, but I'll get a small tip and they'll know that sponsoring this stuff works. And before we move on, I have to mention the main gripe I had in that comparison. Overall, I thought that this was well worth the asking price, whether it sounded like the vintage unit or not. But my main disappointment was the amount of modulation you got from the filter envelope. It was so much lower uh, than you got from the original. I'm glad to say that in the latest firmware, that's 1.2.7, they've hugely improved this. So here's a patch I played this morning with the full filter envelope amount. I'm using the older 1.2.6 firmware. And here's exactly the same patch played with the new 1.2.7 firmware after the update. And you can hear there's a massive difference, but if you want the old tone back, just drop the envelope amount. Well, that's a huge difference. Just sounds big, beefy and fat. <laughs> really what I was expected originally. So this puts a completely different slant on the whole thing. It really does make it much more like the older unit. So I'd say there's pretty much nothing in it now. Yeah, so much better. Let's just take a quick look at the form factor. It's the same form factor we get on all these Behringer synths. You can unscrew these eight little screws and you can take it out of this enclosure and throw in your Euro rack. It does actually come with a Euro rack power supply, USB cable, and a couple of Euro rack patch cables as well. Okay, then let's take a look at how this all works. We've got a few modes that we access with these three buttons here. We can see the preset button is flashing at the minute, and that's because I've edited it. Edit something and it starts flashing. 
the preset, the performance and the settings button take you to different menus, basically take you to different modes. So preset mode, we're just selecting the presets. These are some of the presets I created for the track that I used on my other demos. And actually I'll put it at the end of this so you can hear what this sounds like on its own, in its own right. It's really nice. But this is B09. We've got four banks of presets. Let's get into bank A. We press preset and press one. And now we're in A09. Preset and three gets you to C09. And preset and four gets you to D09. I know it looks like a zero, but that's D09. And if you look up again at bank A, we've got names for each of the patches. They don't have that on the others. And we've got patches zero to 99. And I think these are original patches from the Prophet 600. So don't expect too much from them, not really modern tones. I wouldn't judge it on the patches themselves. <laughs> As I was saying, but there are some quite nice ones in here. Yes, there's an R and couple of sequences. Bank A has got the presets that are named. Bank B, C and D, they're not named and I don't, I don't think you can name them. You can't name them on the Synth Tribe app at the minute anyway. But yeah, you can see, whoops. There's loads and loads of requests to be able to flick through them using the value knob. So by the time you watch this, maybe there'll be another update that allows you to do that. We've also got preset copy and preset paste. So hold preset and press five, it's copied. Press six and you paste it. Well, you can't paste it to the same place. And we've got preset seven, which is randomized. Preset eight and then preset nine, that's copy bank, paste bank, and then preset zero gets you to the basic patch. The next mode we've got is if we press the performance button, we enter the additional parameters mode. So we're still in the preset mode. That's still flashing. And this is where we go into all the different menus and I'll describe these in a bit more detail in a minute, but each of the buttons takes you to a different menu or menu heading, I suppose. So button one takes you to the LFOs, button two takes you to the vibrato menu, button three takes you to the mod wheel menu, button four takes you to the envelopes, you get the idea. Five is the pitch bend, six is the frequency of these, or how these frequency knobs work. I'll show that in a second. Seven is velocity, eight is after touch, and nine and zero are empty at the minute. And we've got more than one selection on each of the menus. So we go to LFO, press it once, run the LFO shape, and then we turn the value knob. At the minute it's on pulse or triangle, that's pulse or triangle. So you've just got the one switch on the, on the panel, but you've got six different LFO shapes. So you select the menu item, that's the LFO target now, and then that's the LFO speed. So as you flick through it, back to the shape, then to the target, and then to the speed, and that's the same with all of them. So that's the vibrato speed. That's it again, vibrato amount. Comes with the VCA envelope shape, and you can change the shape. That was linear, fast exponential, fast linear, slow exponential, VCF now. So slow linear, fast exponential, fast linear, slow exponential, and you can keep on just going round and round and round. It doesn't stop. The knob. Then if we press this again, we're no longer in preset mode. Preset mode isn't lit at all. And we're just playing whatever. It's a what you see is what you get mode. So we're not getting much there. It does have a nice tone, doesn't it? So back to preset mode. 
Okay, so now we've lost that edit. So if you wanted to save it, you'd have had to save it then. Let's go into panel mode. And then to save that, we press record and press wherever you want to save it. So 36. And we're back in preset mode. We edit it, starts flashing again. And then finally, we've got the settings menu. Hit settings and we've got another menu system in there. So MIDI settings, transpose, preset, dump, that sort of thing. But the one that's probably most interesting is eight. And this is the unison detune and the voice spread. So this affects the voice. This is something that you might use while you're programming things. So let's put that on a unison. <laughs> let's get a better tone, shall we? Let's go into the presets. Let's load 37, because that'll be a standard basic patch. If we put this on unison now, we're playing all the eight voices. So go back into settings. They're all really well tuned. Then go to eight. So voice spread. I have to put it onto auto tune precision mode and then press it again. We're in unison detune. And because I've been into settings before, unison detune wasn't the first thing. I came to an oppressed eight, whereas it is actually menu item one. So sometimes it remembers the last page you've been on. So when you come into these, any of these menus, it's normally going to be say detune, then voice spread, then auto tune precision, but not necessarily. So you just get used to flicking through the different pages. So if I go back into performance mode, for example, or so the additional parameters mode by pressing performance if I hit one. I'm on LFO shape there, but occasionally it doesn't appear as LFO shape. It remembers where I was previously. So, but you get used to them. Once you've used it a few times, it's not anything of an issue. But every now and then when you first get it, it may confuse you because you'll be pushing the button thinking, I should be on unison detune or whatever, and you're not. See that time I was. So in there we've got voice spread as well on or off and that spreads the different voices so it slightly detunes them which at some point I didn't realize I had it on and thought it was knackered and it wasn't I had voice spread on so if we go back into unison detune my voice spreads so that's a slop now Press it again, voice spread, let's turn it off. <laughs> so there you go. And you've got the tune button there. And if you press tune, it tunes the whole thing. The original had this, loads of old synths do, and you just got to wait while it tunes everything. And while it's doing that, it's well worth explaining that you do have to wait a few minutes. It's an analog synth. When you turn it on, don't expect it to be perfectly in tune. Didn't take too long. Let's go into something else. That's how it all works. Let's take a go at programming it and doing some stuff with it then. Okay, we'll start off with just a simple sawtooth patch. So we're on B. B is completely empty except for the ones I've already programmed. So I'll put it onto 21. Okay, so that's just oscillator A playing on the sawtooth. So this doesn't represent what we're playing at all. But I know it's something like this. So you get your sawtooth, triangle, or your square, or your pulse, I should call it. And you can blend those. Just like you can on the Pro 1 or the Profit 5. So oscillator B is identical from here on. Turn it up. What AR as well. We can detune oscillator B. I 
and we've got sync on A as well. So uh, if you're going to sync it, it's got to be much higher pitch or higher pitch at least than B. And that brings me to these frequency knobs and that'll take us into our first menu item we'll look at. Okay, let's listen to just one on its own. So if we go into additional parameter mode, I think it was menu item six, oscillator B frequency, oscillator A frequency, normally starts with A, okay. So we've got here octave, or I don't know what the F, this little dot stands for, but this, it's completely independent of the keyboard. And as you can use oscillator B as a modulation source, it just makes things really handy so that doesn't change the note while you're playing the keyboard. But the other modes are free, which is the same, but it changes with the keyboard. And then we've got semitones as well. And this is all in addition for the Glee Glee. It just makes using the oscillators just really quite easy and handy. So if you wanted um, an interval on oscillator B, for example, we can go into oscillator B frequency mode. Let's put that onto semitones. And again, you can change that to octaves or detach it from the keyboard as well. And if we move now down to the polymod section, it's quite handy to show sync. So we've got filter envelope or oscillator B. Let's put the filter envelope onto frequency LA. So this envelope now is controlling the frequency of oscillator A. Let's listen to oscillator A on its own. Okay. Put sync on. And if we modulate oscillator A with oscillator B, don't forget these aren't actually showing anything of any relevance at the minute. Um, actually, just to show quickly, we can go negative. Of course, when you're syncing um, oscillator A is lower than oscillator B, you don't hear anything. But you get the idea. Okay, let's modulate frequency A with oscillator B. Take sync off. Nice, all works as you'd expect. Okay, then let's look at unison. We've seen that already, but it's got a couple of tricks up its sleeve. Unison, all eight at once. Or if we hold a chord. Chord mode. Nice. Or if you wanted it to be a mono synth, just hold one note down. Now it's a mono synth. Voice priority can be changed in the settings in option nine. Oops. Voice priority. Last, low, or high. Hitting settings again brings us back to the edited preset. If we press preset though, we go back to the saved preset, which was standard basic patch. Let's move over to the filter then. 24 dB low pass. And what's nice here is you don't get that drop in volume or bass when you increase the resonance. Really nice that, isn't it? Big and beefy it means you can get a lot of resonance without losing all that beef. I've got 
positive or negative envelope amount. So let's increase the envelope amount. And this is what was lacking um, on the original firmware. Just didn't go up enough. It only came to about here. So you can get a lot more juice from it now. We've got filter tracking, so let's make sure that's on full. Envelope amount down. But we can get some really nice, beautiful bassy tones out of that. So that's just the filter. Let's put full tracking on. <laughs> that's a good rattler, isn't it? That's really thick and nice, isn't it? Not every filter can do that. Well, that brings us to the envelopes. And this is one of the really interesting bits on the Prophet 600 and the Pro 800. So let's get a normal tone up again, shall we? Let's go back to the preset. Okay. So if we go to the envelope section, go to the menu, go to four, we've got the VCA envelope shape, which can be slow linear. Let's leave it on the amplifier for now. And let's just have a listen, shall we? It's linear, so it's flat. And if we hold it, just drop the sustain. Add a bit of decay. You can hear it sort of opens a bit, and that's exactly what the Prophet 600 used to do. And let's, so it sort of comes down and goes flat, but it sounds slightly unnatural. As I said, it's exactly what the 600 used to do. And we've got exponential, so it's dropping that sort of curve. That's fast. We do it slow. So that's still the exponential curve, but slower. And when we do it fast, it can be really snappy. Which is what the original couldn't do. It's got nice control over... It's not an analog envelope. You can feel like it's not um, as smooth as some, but it's... Compared to the original, it's loads better. And if we do the same on the filter, for example, so let's leave that up there and let's put a bit high resonance and envelope amount on the filter. Let's go into the filter settings, the VCF envelope shape. Let's put that on the fast exponential as well. So that's really nice, isn't it? That works fine. You'd have no qualms about that whatsoever. Some nice, really deep things happen in there. Some nice kicks and stuff out of this. if I spend a bit more time playing with it. So these envelope amounts, we've got fast exponential, fast linear. So the exponential drops faster. Slow exponential. Ooh, nice. And then slow linear. This is nice, this one, this slow exponential on that sort of tone. Really deep at the end, isn't it? So yeah, we're using this sort of quite naturally, actually. What else have we got in there? Let's take a look at the LFO. Before we look into the menu, we've got the LFO frequency of A and B. So it's modulating both A and B. Initial amount. You can set that only to work with the mod wheel, and I'll show that in a minute. 
And the frequency can be fast or slow. You've got different settings on the frequency. But pulse width, again, it's on both. That's A, and that's B. And we've got the filter as well. And that's what you got on the original Prophet 600, but with the Glee Glee and in the Pro 800, we get a lot more options. So if we go to the menu, LFO shape, pulse or triangle, which is what we're on here, or we can go to random and sign, or noise and saw. It's all pretty self-explanatory. Press it again and we go into the LFO target. Now this is interesting, it's on A and B at the minute, so I'm gonna flick this up, it's both A and B are getting modulated, that's B, and that's A, together. But we can change that to just A, just B, or both of them and the VCA. So you can hear it's getting louder and quieter. And that just opens up loads of extra bits and bobs, and that's what you got on the Prophet 5. There was five buttons, not three switches on the Prophet 5. And next up on the LFO, we got the speed. So let's knock it back actually to, so press it twice to go back to the target. We'll just put it back to A and B, shall we? So we know what we're doing. And the highest speed on fast, and the highest speed on slow. And again, the reason for doing that is just to upgrade what you had in the Prophet 600 originally, which just didn't have enough steps. So this gives you much finer control over each of those frequencies, but you can't sync it to MIDI, at least not as far as I can find anyway. So menu system two is vibrato, and that's introduced using the mod wheel by default, but we're not hearing anything because we need to set it up. So vibrato amount, let's turn it up. Press it again, and we've got vibrato speed. So this is basically a second LFO. We're using the mod wheel to introduce that at the minute. But if we go to the next menu item, which is the mod wheel items, mod wheel amount, minimum, low, high, full. So there's four settings on that. Press it again, we've got the mod wheel target. So at the minute, the target is on vibrato, but we could put it on the LFO. So when I hit this now, it's already vibratoing or vibrating, whatever you call it, because I'm not controlling it with the modulation wheel anymore, but I'm controlling the LFO. So if we go back into the vibrato amount, put it on zero, and now when I hit the mod wheel, Let's hit it again. Target is LFO, so. And again, those settings of minimum, full, and high, and whatever, still count on this. We've also got a modulation delay, and that's not for the modulation wheel. This is delaying what normal modulation is gonna happen when you don't control it with the mod wheel. So the mod wheel destination at the minute is the LFO, so the vibrato is introduced automatically. But if we put a delay on that, which is quite nice, we could do some natural sounding stuff. So there's a fair amount of control over the LFO and the vibrato, so it really does feel like you do have two LFOs in there. The next menu item we've not looked at yet is the pitch bend range. So we've got pitch bend target, and we've got pitch bend range. So at the minute, it's modulating the pitch, obviously. So if we go in, that's 12 semitones. Let's knock it down to something else. Five. And the target, you can change that to the VCF. So. 
Let's increase the amount or the range to full. Not a huge amount, but gives you something to play with. And of course, the cutoff can be modulated with velocity and after touch as well, which is where I'm going to have to say goodbye to my lovely little micro key uh, because it hasn't got velocity or after touch. So I'm going to go and grab the hydrosynth. So if you go into edit mode, press performance, go to seven. This is the velocity settings. Let's see we're on VCA velocity at the minute. So twack that up. That works. And then press it again. And we're in cut off modulation with the velocity. And it's not actually doing anything. And that's because it's interacting with the envelope amount. It's almost like it's twisting the envelope amount up. So if that's on zero, it won't do anything. Let's bring it up there. Let's just turn the VCA down so we don't confuse things. Turn the cutoff down. And it's still not working because it's not just increasing the cutoff, it's increasing the amount of envelope. So you can hear it click in there. Let's add some decay. Now you can hear it. So let's turn it up a bit more. So now you can hear it working. Well, if we had the sustain on full. Yeah, just important to realize it's like the velocity envelope amount increasing, not just twisting the cutoff knob. Okay, then next up, and this is super cool, we'll go into eight, which is the after touch. So, nothing at the minute. Let's turn the VCF amount up. Polyphonic after touch. Staying low. Wow. Polyphonic after touch on a £338 eight voice analog poly synth. That's insane. If only I could play it better. So. Fabulous. So finally, we've got the AWP and the sequences, and they're controlled by these two buttons here, the sync source and the sync clock. Repeatedly pressing the sync source gives you the sync source options. That's MIDI, USB, internal, or external. External brings a sync in through the CV input up here. So go back to internal. And if you load the patch and it's not playing, and you might notice that the R um, one is lit and you can't hear anything, then that'll be because your sync source is MIDI or something, or something that's not sending a signal at least. The sync clock controls the BPM. Knock it down to 128, 127. Subdivision, so we've got eighths, fourths, or quarters, 32, sixteenths, and triplets. We've also got a swing function, and we've got the note length as well. So if we put the ARP on quickly. Clock. Let's go to the subdivision. Swing. And length. And that works for both the sequencer and for the ARP. If you're on external, we go to USB external. So that's coming in through the through the analog sync in. We also have the option of the polarity. Start and stop. And let me find it. There's swing again. There's note length again. In PPQN. Got two sequences and they can play simultaneously. 
And they're very simple. You record the notes that are played back at the rate of the swing note and the length and everything that we've just seen set with the sync clock. And we've got a limit of 400 steps between them. So they share the limit. You could have sequence of one with 300 steps and sequence of two with 100 steps. And if you start recording more on sequence of one, it sort of steals them from sequence of two, but 400 steps should be plenty. To play it, you just press play. Play two as well. to make it sound anyways i can't remember what i played what key i'm in or anything like that but you're playing on top of channel chatted them there you're playing on top of the sequences so there seem to be all sorts of notes happening but um hopefully you get the idea and to record something we'll press record sequence of one we can see we've already got 32 steps in there so we'll start recording on step 33 if we just go really high so you can hear the difference If we play that back, this is the original stuff, then so you record after what you've already recorded on there. If you want to reset that, press record sequence and zero, and we're back to step one. But we could have different lengths of sequences on one and two, for example, do some polymetric stuff. So although it's not super complex, it's quite an interesting little thing. And the ARP is similarly simple. Let's come out of the sequence mode. We've got six different playback styles in total. We've got, if we press the ARP up and down button, we've got up, we've got down, we've got up and down, and then up, then down. The difference between up and down and then down is um, exclusive or inclusive. So exclusive, which is up and down, is Stranger Things mode. Let's turn the speed down a bit. It's just drop that a couple of octaves so it's playing let's turn it off up then down but only the edge ones once but if we go into inclusive mode it's playing the top and the bottom notes twice let's just go in and change the note length or was it the release that we're hearing there subdivision swing note length then we've got ARP assign so ARP assign 1 is assign mode so it'll play as I've played them or ARP assign 2 is random holding the ARP button and pressing record We'll hold the current notes played, so let's try that. There's no octave switch on this. If you wanted to do octaves, that's sort of the way you'd do it, but it's a pretty simple thing. And you can play the sequences and the arps. So if we play sequence of two, I think I've erased this sequence of one, haven't I? So although it's simple, it's different, so there's fun things you can do with that and that you wouldn't do on all the bits and bobs. There you go, so I think we've got to the end there. I think I've covered everything. There are a couple of little anomalies in the software. Sometimes, as I think I've shown already, you think you're in level menu level one and you're in menu level two. This sync clock, for example, earlier on I was playing it and that just appeared. And this time I had to press sync clock to get it up and I'm not quite sure what that display is going to display sometimes. Maybe that's just because I don't know the rules or maybe it's slightly random. I don't know. Uh, so you can get a little bit lost when you first start playing this. I know that I had it completely out of tune and thought it was broken. Firstly, because I was using the unison spread at some point without realizing it or the voice spread, I should say, without realizing it. And then another point, I'd somehow transposed it by a whole tone and I couldn't figure out what I'd done. And I'd been in the settings, I pressed two, I pressed the button and it had gone out by two semitones. So, you know, anything with a menu like this can be a little bit difficult to get to grips with initially, but I'm talking like, you know, an hour or two, not, nothing major. And you do have the screen, it does tell you what's happening. 
you know, and it's a it's a retro aesthetic. It's what it looks like. People complain that it hasn't got a proper LED, but then that's not the point, is it? The point is trying to recreate the feel of using the Profit 600, and it absolutely does that. And with the new firmware updates, it sounds much better. Sounds really, really good, actually. So coming up is the little demo I've made. So do listen to that. It just shows this in all its glory on its own terms. It just sounds like a really great synth. An eight voice analog poly synth for £339. Just wow, really. Uh, there's all I can say about it. So I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, please think about subscribing, ring the bell, join me on Patreon, share the love and all that sort of stuff. Check out my StarskyCard.com website. There's presets and patches, free stuff and things you can buy. But do check out Toman as well if you're thinking of buying one because it'll be a nice thank you to them for sponsoring this video. So yep, here is the little demo track and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.